I thought we did this on an iPhone. <laughs> Welcome to this segment of Cal TV News' Off Script, where reporters share behind-the-scenes stories from in the field. Welcome, my name is Tomas Manglonio, the co-director of the department. This is our last segment of Off Script for fall 2017. Thanks for joining us. And we're going to get right into it. So, Anna, um, today we have a full slate of reporters here today speaking about their stories, first of whom is our new reporter, Anna, who will be talking about a story you just shot recently uh, regarding basic needs. Do you mind telling us what the story is about and how you went about covering that story. Yeah, so this week is the Hunger and Homeless Awareness Week. So um, the Basic Needs team uh, had a event that's called Basic Needs Mental Health. And it's meant to be a very comfortable and secure and protected space for students to just come together and talk about like their experiences. And um, I think the event also introduces a bunch of resources that's, that are available for the students. And there was also a panel of students who were able to speak about their personal experiences as well as, you know, the tips and tricks that they would or they could provide for the students who, you know, showed up at the event. All right. Uh, thanks so much for covering it. Do you mind sharing with us some of the tips and tricks you just mentioned? And what were some of the students' experiences? You know, this is part two of the basic needs issue that we're talking about. The first one was with the ASUC EAVP's office. Um, what was the main takeaway from this event that you went to? Um, I think the main takeaway was just all the resources that they provided. Um, there's a lot of, I think part of the discussion, um, a lot of people brought up one significant problem is that there's just a lot of resources and it's hard to navigate and find them all. So then the ASUC senators are talking about, um, talking to Cal Central to have one centralized information system with just everything there. So they're currently working on that. and. One of the stories that the panelists shared that was the most memorable to me was just there are services, but it's hard to get those services. So yes, there are um, health, there is health insurance, but the co-payment for health insurance is a problem itself. So it's just like the little things that we don't think about um, when we think about these benefits. So I feel like that's like the main takeaway from the event. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. And so uh, just a quick reminder to our viewers, after Offscript is ending, um, we will be sharing all the links to these stories um, on the post itself. So be sure to tune in for that later on. And right now, um, thank you, Anna, for sharing. We'll move on to our next reporter, Kara Holbrook. Kara, we actually just finished working on this story mm -hmm. um, before, in, uh, before going live right now. Um, so you're working on a story regarding um, women being able to drive now in Saudi Arabia. Um, do you mind giving us a brief background about that story and um, how you went about putting it together? Yeah, so um, for this upcoming video that's set to release on Monday, um, I am doing a BuzzFeed style, so I'm not physically in the video, but um, my, my, it's a voiceover and then lots of B-roll from Saudi Arabia. And uh, in order to do this video, I did a lot of research on the crown prince who was just appointed a few months ago, uh, Mohammed bin Salman. And he serves underneath his father, King Salman, who's now 82 years old. So uh, the crown prince kind of um, is dictating where the country goes next. And he's implementing a lot of reforms. One of them is uh, his, the royal decree that passed in September, um, allowing women to drive without um, the presence of a male, which is a huge deal because Saudi Arabia had previously been the only country in the whole world uh, that had banned women from driving. Um, a lot of that is tied to the strict Islamic code that the country follows. And um, uh, Mohammed bin Salam has also mentioned that he wants to moderate um, the form of Islam being used. Um, he also influenced another decree that was passed recently that is allowing women to enter into uh, sports fields and go to like large events um, that previously only men could go to. Uh, so I covered that as well. And he's also, um, he recently launched at a tech initiative, I think last week, um, his plans for a $500 billion mega city called Neom. Uh, which is supposed to be a huge technological, um, innovative, innovative hub um, on the Red Sea in Saudi Arabia. 
and it's supposed to link um, all three continents um, in that region and just be a hub of diversity. So I covered all that in the video. So. Right, that was a fascinating story to help you with. I really appreciated how in depth you went with the research. Um, I want to also talk about um, we do have students who um, you know are directly affected by this <coughs> the news. It's very personal to them and where they're from. Do you mind also sharing behind the scenes stories about um, reaching out to the groups here and if they made any comment if at all um, about about the matter? Yeah, so um, I tried to reach out to um, various uh, professors in um, and, an, and a speaker who actually came to campus um, who is um, a Saudi Arabian poet and all of them refused to talk about it for the most part. Uh, he, I actually went to this um, said poet's, um, he gave a speech on campus for the Near Eastern uh, Studies Department and he talked about how other poets that he know um, in Saudi Arabia have actually been imprisoned for years um, under the reign of King Salman. Um, due to them speaking out. So I think many people are a little hesitant, even in America, to speak out against the regime and just talk openly about it. So that's why um, something like Cal TV is great, just to like, sp spread the word about it. For sure. And so the story isn't up on our uh, YouTube or Facebook page yet, but it will be next week. And so stay tuned for that. Um, it really de uh, delves into um, the, the recent news and, again, all these uh, contradictions that we're hearing um, with e even uh, input we're getting in Berkeley. Um, next, I want to move on to our next reporter, Mia Villanueva. Uh, Mia, we also worked on a story regarding Trump's recent trip to Asia, and more specifically, his attendance of the conference in the Philippines. Um, can you talk about why you chose to do this story, and also what, uh, a brief background on it? Um, I chose to do this story because I'm actually um, part Filipino, so I have a lot of um, a lot of family out there that's been affected directly by the presidency and just how. Um, on edge, it's made a lot of a lot of people, especially people um, in like lower economic brackets. Um, well, to be clear, President uh, Duterte, of, Duterte, Duterte, Duterte of the correct. Philippines. Yes, of the Philippines, right. um, and it's put a lot of people on edge. Just um, he's very been very radical in his um, crackdown on drugs, and it's led to uh, like tens of thousands of deaths of um, drug dealers, users, and then a lot of bystanders. Um, have been so I mean he has statements that have been released uh, along the lines of like you know if you see someone doing drugs or dealing drugs you have my permission to kill them and so it's really been unnerving for the people in the Philippines so that's why I felt um, passionate to cover it because a lot of my family out there is um, politically involved so it's shooken things up for sure interesting and so your story will actually come out at 9 30 a.m. tomorrow mm -hmm. on both of our platforms another thing I wanted to talk to you about is that the relationship um, Trump and Duterte have been compared in some instances. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that in the report, um, but you also address uh, the last administration, the Obama administration. Can you talk about um, the aspe aspects of that that you mentioned in the story? Um, yeah, um, so a lot of people in the Philippines, um, a lot of politicians um, believe that this is a step forward for U.S.-Philippine relations because um, Trump and Duterte kind of have some sort of like camaraderie, and there was a lot of... Um, there was a lot of backlash from people here in the U.S. saying, why didn't he address human rights? Um, he, uh, the Secretary of State for the U.S. Um, stated that he did briefly um, in, um, in context of the Philippine drug war, but um, Duterte's um, spokesperson denied that. So there's really, we haven't been able to get a clear answer on it. So, um, but um, President Obama was very, um, very upfront in speaking about human rights, and Duterte is pretty much known for being very like does not want to be challenged essentially so um so i guess this is a better relationship between presidents for sure all right thanks for doing that report mm -hmm. again more in-depth research done by mia on that and really recapping what this trip to asia means it was trump's first trip mm -hmm. there so it was historic uh, that story again will be coming out tomorrow morning uh, be sure to check out for that um, and now we'll be moving over to uh, our reporter, Polina, who is doing, um, uh, I, I want to say, one of our uh, more spirited stories. <laughs> um, uh, and it has to do with a group on campus. Do you mind explaining what it is? Yes. So um, my video is going to be a behind the scenes look at what goes on um, at Zellerbach Hall. It's, Zellerbach is so central to um, our campus physically and also just the events that it holds and the performers that they're able to um, invite here. And um, 
coming from a performing arts background, I thought it'd be interesting and also valuable to um, show the Berkeley community just like how much work it takes to get a production on the stage. All right, and so uh, you will be meeting with, uh, you know, so many plays happen at Zellerbaca. What specifically are you going to be covering um, when you do meet with them, or, or do you know? Yes, um, I will be covering The Hard Nut, which is um, kind of a modern take on Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker. Um, so that will be at the end of December, or middle of December. All right, yeah. wonderful. All right, we're looking forward to it. And lastly, Talia, uh, your story will be coming out much later, but we thought it was important, since this is our last segment of Off Script, to um, share some time to, to talk about it. Um, you have some, uh, I would call it developing breaking news. Do you mind sharing it with our audience? Sure, yeah. Um, just knowing that the interview is actually happening this coming Monday, and it'll probably be released within the next two weeks, week probably. Um, I don't want to share too many details to encourage you to go and watch the video mm -hmm. that's going to be released, but the gist is uh, a few weeks ago during my American Studies discussion, um, my GSI, Eva, started talking on the subject of the recent uh, allegations against many celebrities regarding sexual assault um, and rape and how that has been a concern in the past here on our UC Berkeley campus but that has kind of dwindled away with time um, and that kind of got to me because I had a lot of opinions and thoughts coming out as did many people uh, about these recent allegations. So she talked a lot about the current um, battle she's going through against the university. She actually won a case um, against the, this particular professor who is tenured and very high paid and very highly regarded here. So it was a really uh, amazing and big step for this whole movement. But um, even after that news came out and was proven that he was sexually harassing a student, he was not excused from the university and is still employed here on our campus right now. So I think this is very timely um, and kind of just takes attention to the fact that we don't, uh, we see these things coming out about people that we see so frequently, but we forget to see the people here around us who are facing the same allegations. All right, thank you, Talia. Of course, you have your interview coming up. We're looking forward to it. Such an important story that I think has often been overlooked. So uh, we're gonna spend a lot of time looking into this and making sure this isn't the only time we talk about it. And with that, we thank you for joining us this past semester of Off Script, where we share behind the scenes stories from in the field. Thanks for tuning in, but we'll be, be we'll, we, we will be back in the spring with new stories and Off Script isn't going anywhere. So stay tuned for that, for this and more regarding sports, entertainment and news. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Thomas Maglonia. <laughs>